Hello. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Well, I just barely made it because we lost power here at around two. Yeah. I know. I'm expecting that to happen here. Yeah. And we lost power last night from maybe six to 10. So I fortunately ate a little early. Of course, my husband decided to eat just as the power went out. But fortunately, <laughs> we've got a gas stove. And I had made him pull out earlier what he wanted for dinner and put it in the mini fridge so we didn't have to open it the big fridge. Uh -huh. But today we didn't plan ahead because we thought the rolling blackouts wouldn't hit us again. But this time there was a power pole in flames. My husband left the house right after we oh lost goodness. our power and he calls me up and he goes, oh, on the expressway, not far from our house is a pole in flames with the firemen there. And, and uh, so I'm going to assume that a um, transformer probably got overheated. Oh. And that's really all the money you can spare. I recommend you do a little bit of research on G Frankenstein AR. Hi, Deborah. Well, how are you doing, Julie? We can hear your TV, I think. <laughs> that's not mine. No, yeah, I think it's um, Deborah, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> So, so um, I'll switch over to my face camera after I do the tutorial. Just want to okay. give everybody a few more minutes. It's not even quite five o'clock yet. So, so how are you doing these days? <sighs> I'm okay. We had our power was out for about four hours on Saturday. Mm. It was out twice yesterday. Yeah. So yeah, we we keep losing we 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 keep losing power a lot here and there. Yeah. It didn't go out today yet. So, um, we've had my husband and I both have had the uh, uh, thing on our phone saying that they're going to turn off the power. So, mm. so it's probably that really slow. Should... Yeah, it's really hard when you work out of your home and you need that power. Yes, it is. Yeah. I just I love your topping. I'm sorry. Go ahead, oh, Julie. Go ahead. Sorry. Thanks. Oh, that's okay. I was going to tell Anne that I love her top. Thank mm -hmm. you. I've gotten lots of compliments on it. And I really like it, and unfortunately, it's showing wear. But I will have to be completely threadbare before I give it up. <laughs> I think we all have a top or two like that. I know it's so comfortable. <laughs> so, Julie, what were you going to say? Oh, yeah. Nothing important. <laughs> I were just got. Your power. Oh, yeah. It's 100 and, well, yeah, 119 here. Wow. And the power, um, Pamela just got her power back on because she's here in the same town as me, right? Yeah. And, um, a different section. Yeah. Yeah. And our power went out three times over the weekend. Oh, man. And it's too hot to have that happen. Holy cow. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I went to talk to my neighbors. And they wouldn't open their door. They didn't want to let any of the um, hot air in. Yeah. So he's just like, he made me talk through the door, which I completely understood. <laughs> oh, well, I went to the shop today. So our door has been open a couple of times. I went and worked for a while. Yeah. So, well, ladies, it is just now five o'clock. I think I'll go ahead and start the um, tutorial. Okay. Deborah, you can um, uh, unmute yourself if you want to, or you can stay muted if you want to. And I'm going to switch the view over to speaker view so that um, it's bigger on the screen. So when it records, it'll record bigger, hopefully. Um, okay. So what I was going to show you, I keep remembering um, fun things that I did um, years and years ago and and that you don't see anymore. And so I thought I'd show you some of those techniques. Like one of the things that I showed you a couple of months ago was the, um, the broken heart block. And you might not remember it, but um, there's a video of it in the forum. But um, it's something that we did like 20 years ago. And here's another thing that we did about 20 years ago. And I think it's super fun and it makes a super easy quilt block. 
And uh, so I thought I would show you guys how to do it. And um, this is Riviera, the Liberty um, collection, quilting cotton collection Riviera. I also made this block for the center of my daughter's zipper pouch that I made over the weekend, the same way that I'm gonna show you how to make this. And um, I embroidered that center for her. So she loves owls. So what you're gonna do is, whatever you wanna put in the center of your block, this makes a super simple square and a square block. And you can either make it so that your um, center part comes out on point, which is what I did with this one. So I cut the center block on point and then I put um, the, uh, border around it and then I put it into the square in a square block um, or you can cut it straight and then your block comes out on point so this one I did straight so that the block would come out on point and this one I cut the center on point so that the block would come out straight so um, what I'm going to do is show you how to make this block the easiest um, thing the easiest way to do these if you have a piece of fabric that you want to feature for the center of your square and a square block. Um, choose the size of the center first. And this center, this whole center piece is five and a half inches. Then your um, background piece, you're going to cut a square that's three inches bigger than whatever your center is. So this is five and a half. My background square is eight and a half. This is called, by the way, this technique is called um, a captured square or a captured block. So that's the name of that um, technique. And I learned this, like I said, about 20 years ago. So my block has a three and a half inch center square. It's got um, two three and a half inch rectangles for um, the sides and two one and a half by five and a half inch rec rectangles for the top and bottom. So did I say that right? One and a half by three and a half, one and a half by five and a half. That's the size of these two rectangles. So what I'm going to do and is go ahead gonna, and are we going to be able to find all these dimensions someplace? Yeah, I'll um I'll send a actually I'll just put it in with where I put the video on the forum. Mm -hmm. So I'll put okay, the thank you. Yeah, I'll put the um the dimensions in there, but you can do this with any size block. Um, all you have to do is you just have to remember that you want to add three inches um to make the block come out exactly with a quarter of an inch around this one it was bigger because I wanted it to be bigger but um if you want it to come out just like this where you have the quarter of an inch for your um seams make your outside three inches bigger than your inside so you can make your block any size you want to if the inside six and a half inches make your um make your background fabric nine and nine and a half okay so I'm just going to go ahead and sew this little center block together first. I probably should have just done that because you guys don't really need to see me do that. But I'm going to go ahead and do that um, now while I have you on here. So I'm just going to show you how quick this is because it comes out super, super quick. Um, and it's much easier than doing a square and a square block the regular way because you don't have to line anything up. Hi, Susan. Whoops didn't switch to the right camera. I turned my camera off instead. Hello, whoever just came on. I can't see the computer anymore. <laughs> so I'm just going to sew this little block together real quick. Oops, I didn't turn on my iron. I've got to do that too. So I thought I was all ready to go. I should have just sewed this little centerpiece together so you didn't have to watch me do this part, but heck, this will just show you how fast it really is. Except I didn't turn on my iron. So hold on just a sec while I get this ready. And I fell in love with these stripes because friend of mine made a quilt 
super cute quilt that she made for charity. Just a really quick square and a square with uh, nine patches. And it was after I had already thought of doing this tutorial for you guys. And um, I'll show it to you when we're done here. Um, but it came out so cute, her quilt. And it's just a really, just really big blocks, like 12 inch blocks. Um, with square in the square blocks and she used stripes around hers and, I, and on my way to the shop today I was like I have a stripe that's like that I'm gonna do that because it's so cute so this is um seams open? what's that do you press your seams open no I press them to the side I press them I always press them toward um when I do things like this I always press them toward the whatever the um border is so I press them toward the stripes in this case <clears throat> I came unfretted But I really love this little um, uneven stripe. It's kind of like a cabana stripe. It's really cute. And um, this Liberty Collection Riviera, I thought was so adorable for this block. And now I'm thinking I need to make a whole quilt out of it. <laughs> so I think it makes such a cute quilt. And there's a couple of, um, I'm going to switch this back. There's a couple of good prints in the collection that will would make really good backgrounds for this block too. So, okay. So I'm just pressing it. Hold on just a sec. So that's all made. So now what we're gonna do is take the background fabric and we're just gonna fold it in half each direction so that we find the center. And I just finger pressed it, not too hard. And what I'm gonna do is just line up. I can see where the crease is that I just made. I'm gonna line up the points of my, um, block with the points with the creases and if you do that you'll get it just square so that's perfect and I'm just going to put a couple of pins in the center I don't want them to go too far out to the side just to hold it so that it is so it says stay straight on the background now if you guys are in the um Liberty League a couple of months ago, I sent these hot hammers in the box. They're super cool. They're used for what you can do. I'll just show you. If you're going to hem something, you can measure your hem just by turning this over and ironing right on it. It's really cool. So I think they're really neat. And I've always wanted one for me, so I got them for you. <laughs> That's what I always do. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my hot hammer here. Now you don't have to have one of these. You can use um, a piece of mylar or just like a thick piece of paper, maybe a piece of um, junk mail or cardstock or something. Um, just something that'll keep um, this nice and stiff against the edge of where your block is. So what I've done is I put it right up against where um, the edge of that center block is. And I'm just gonna flip this side over and I'm gonna press it. And then I'll move that away and leave it flipped over like that. And it'll stay there for a sec. And then I'm just going to put a couple of pins there to hold it. So these two pins that we're holding the corners down, I'm just going to take them out and use them to hold this down here. And then I'm going to flip it around to the other side. On the opposite side, we're going to do the exact same thing. And when I'm not talking, this actually goes super, super fast.
Okay, and then I'm just gonna take the pins that are here and use them to hold this. Now, all we're gonna do is go to the sewing machine and we're just gonna sew a quarter of an inch um, seam here and a quarter of an inch seam on this side. I did it again. Keep pressing the wrong button. There we go. You still pointed at the <laughs> sewing machine? And yeah, I'm sewing over my needles or my pins. I always do that. Okay, so that just captures, that's why it's called a captured block. It just captures your block right on the inside of that fabric. So I'm just gonna press those open. And then I'm gonna flip this and I'm gonna do the same thing to other sides, the other corners. And the cool thing about doing this is, like I said, you don't have to line it up. You don't have to worry about your corners being off when it comes to your um, square and a square. And if you want to, once you're done, you can take that piece that's on the back off and not have to waste that fabric if you don't want to. It doesn't bother me, but some people don't like to waste fabric and I understand that, so. You can always cut it off the back and use it. There's a good chunk of about five inch square there. So this comes out about using a five and a half inch square and an eight and a half inch square comes out about seven and three quarters when you're done. So if you want something that comes out to a more normal size, you can use a bigger background piece and then just square it up to whatever you want. So say a four inch bigger piece instead of a three inch bigger piece. And then you could square it up to say eight and a half or something like that, if you wanted it to be a more normal size. This comes out exactly seven and three quarters square, so. But if you used a bigger background piece, like I did when I made this for Aaron, so this, uh, Center square was 11 and a half. I used a 15 inch square for the background. And then I had plenty for squaring it up. I actually had probably a 12 and a half inch and I squared it up to 11 and a half, um, an 11 and a half inch square. So it was uh, about four inch difference when I um, did that one. So anyway, this is how it comes out. You get exactly a quarter of an inch seam allowance on each side. So if you just wanted to use all the blocks the same, you could um, make a really cute patchwork with a set on point block. And it's super fast. And you can do it all in um, 
a whoops. Chain piecing. Okay, now you can see me. <laughs> I'm here, I'm here. Super cute idea. Thanks. It's really easy and that's what I love about it. And it's fast. So um so he'll you can make yeah, it. There's, really no there's no bias. There's no bias to uh -uh, cranky it's all, bias to deal with. Yeah. No, it's all on all on square on the mm -hmm. grain. So it's nice. Yep. I like that. Yeah. And then you can like I said, it, it'll make a really, really cute patchwork. Mm -hmm. uh, just set on point patchwork. Very cute. <laughs> Very cute. And now we can see Deborah's face. Hi, Deborah. <laughs> so what, how, what, what's everybody up to? You guys already saw what I'd worked on. That was just that, that little um, zipper pouch that I made for my daughter. So I spent a couple days embroidering it, and then I made the little pouch. You guys are getting a, um, a, a version of that pouch as your pattern in your next tilde box, so. Oh, good, oh, good. Yeah. Yeah, I like that, I really like that pouch. Looks but, like a zipper I could, I could finagle. <laughs> yeah, oh, the way I do it too, it looks like it's a set-in zipper, but uh -huh. it's not, so it makes it really easy. <laughs> oh, good. Good, so good, good, good. yeah, the um the one that I did for you guys for the tilde boxes, I used hometown and I did a, a different um uh um embellishment on the front of the pouch, but you'll have to wait to see what it is. <laughs> I just sent it off to Chelsea for her to get printed. Good. <sighs> so it's so good to see you guys. It's so hot here. <laughs> oh. I think about you guys all the time. I can't stand the heat. So and St. Louis gets hot enough as it is. So. My mother-in-law, my, uh, I should, I, my ex-mother-in-law, uh -huh. <laughs> um, my ex-husband's mom called me yesterday and we talked for like two hours on the phone and, and she called just to ask how we were doing in the heat and <laughs> if we were okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you hear all the news and about the fires and everything, and you always think it's right on top of people, you know, in the area. So. Yeah. Well, yeah. the fires a couple of years ago were like really. They were. I remember that. Yeah. Yep, I remember that. But, but we we were spared, thank heaven. So. Oh. Hey, Helen, how are you? Hi. <laughs> I'm a little late, but. That's oh, okay. <laughs> we'll have it. Um, I recorded everything, so the video will be. I'll put the video up in a couple of days. So okay. As soon as I get it uploaded. Okay. So Deborah, are you are you new? Yes, I am. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's good to see you. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I'm trying to learn this technology here, so I muted myself and try to trying to figure <laughs> oh, it out. Oh, that's okay. You did good. <laughs> you did good. <laughs> I love your quilt in the back. Is that a? Oh, it's a Halloween quilt. Yeah. Right. Oh, it's so cute. That's a witch's hat. I was trying, I was like, okay, I, I could tell that one, one part was like a kettle, maybe pumpkin shaped. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's the fat corner pattern. It is. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. so cute. Yeah, that is really cute. I saw that. Cute. I tried to do it in um, cross stitch and um, I have to get my cataracts done before I do cross stitch ever again. <laughs> <laughs> you need like, um, uh, five count Ada, right? With the big squares. Right, oh, I, doesn't look nice. <laughs> I need that. <laughs> you know what? Have you ever seen, um, have you ever seen people do cross stitch on gingham? It's really cute. It, but it's yeah, like, it's like really big, but <laughs> it's really mm. I looked at that. I thought, oh, this is not your usual work. Put it away. <laughs> so <I> did. <laughs> Get your cataracts done and then go back and do it. <laughs> And they're not getting done until January, so anyway. <laughs> it looks like you've been busy sewing, though, Anne. Yeah. Judging by the background. Well, yeah, I'm getting ready to go on retreat, so I want to get all these pieces cut here for this winter wonderland. So I go to retreat and everything's cut, and I've got vintage star cut, and I've got cheek escape cut. Oh. So I find the trick I'm going to retreat for me is not to have to cut pieces That's because nice. I usually, you know, mistake three and a half and cut it at three or vice versa and if you cut it at three and a half and you need three that's fine but if you cut it at three you need three and a half you've wasted fabric yeah yeah, so, yeah. 
So yeah. we're ready. We're going next. Uh, I leave next Monday. So I can't um, cut and talk at the same time either. So <laughs> neither can I. Oh, and I've learned yeah. not to cut after eight thirty at night. Whew. That's yeah. true. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. anyhow, I. Uh, um, Sorry, go ahead. What were we going to say? Pamela? I was going to say, and you got to be careful when you get a new ruler because some of them I learned the hard way when I started quilting. Some of them have that extra half inch on one side. Mm -hmm. And if mm -hmm. you don't realize that, I mean, you could have, look, you all are shaking your heads. You've all been there where that. Been there, ruler, done that. <laughs> More than once. I never yeah. learned. I know. I know. I literally great. put tape on one of them and say cut here and, and I have to mark it all out because it's so easy to flip it around the wrong way and get right. it wrong yeah, and then you just a, wasted luckily, all that expensive fabric yeah but most of the time most of the time you're cutting too big so at least there's that usually yeah. if you flipped it the wrong direction you're cutting it a half an inch too big well sometimes you need that half inch and you're counting on it and you flip it around to the side that doesn't have the half yeah. inch and oh, you're kind of yeah. yeah but yeah yeah, yeah. But you live and learn, you know, sometimes <laughs> twice. <laughs> Have you been quilting a long time, Deborah? Um, I actually I picked it up about the last year. Oh, oh wow. Yay. Awesome. Very nice. I did it That's like so years ago when I was about 20. I made one or two quilts and then I hadn't done it for, you know, 20, 30 years. So. Yeah. Yeah. Life intervened, right? You had to do other things. I remember yeah. the first time I started quilting, like, well, the second time I started quilting, I should say, um, so much had changed in between because when I was, at, when I was, I made my first quilt when I was in junior high and there were no rotary cutters, there were no, you know, uh, acrylic rulers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so it was all, um, you know, cut everything out of your cereal boxes and mark everything with the pencil and, you know, cut everything with scissors. And then the next time I, the next time I quilted was when I was almost 30, well, like 26, 27, I think what, the next time I started quilting and there was rotary cutters and I was like, oh my goodness, this is so much better. Game changer. <laughs> yes. Much more fun. <laughs> yeah. Where now, are you located, Deborah? Uh, I'm in Florida. Oh, okay. Wow. Speaking of hot. <laughs> yeah. I'm, a, I'm a, a Californian that's transplanted to Florida now, so. Oh, where did you live in California? Bay Area. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's where we're at. Right where we're at. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, we're in San Jose. Oakland. Fantastic. So do you um, like the so I have a... <laughs> Do you like the humidity? It's different, yes? <laughs> yeah, it's very different. But, you know, I talk to my family in California right now, and they have higher temperatures than we do at the moment. Yes, I do. Yeah. Yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> so julie i have a tilde question so uh -huh. on in the pink door they're going to be doing that block of the month for this um tilde quilt with the the baskets and all the applique uh -huh. did you say you were going to be doing the tutorials on that or is somebody yes. else going to be doing you are okay yeah. great yeah, i signed up for that yeah okay okay i love uh -huh. that quilt oh <laughs> oh it's so beautiful i, I know just, you know I signed up for it because I fell in love with the design. And then I, you know, went through a moment of buyer's remorse. I was like, okay, I've never applied before. It looks a little daunting. And I thought, okay, nope. well, this is- We're going to do it the fun. easy way. We're going to do it the easy way. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to jump right in then. With but we're not, doing, that... we're not doing raw edge. We're going to do it so we can actually use the quilt, but it's going to be easy. Yeah. yeah. It is beautiful. Yeah. It's beautiful. We're doing I'm it the same way that it. we're doing the, the one for Liberty right now. So- Okay. Um, yeah, with prepared edge. So it'll make it Good. much easier to, to sew. Well, I was impressed that it comes with the backing and everything. I mean, does it come with the, um, uh, the batting, but the backing and everything, I guess. Oh, really? Oh, with. I didn't even know. Can I didn't I, know what she did with it. Yeah. 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 So that's really nice. Nice. Well, I'm going to behave and not look at it, <laughs> but you <laughs> piqued my curiosity. <laughs> well, you can, you can make it with, uh, if you got the fat quarter bundle, yeah, you can make it with that. Yeah, I have a lot of tilde. I think I'll make it with what I have. And if you have the if you have the chambray dots, that's all. The only difference you'll need some chambray dots to go. Yeah. With okay. Make the uh, the vase part. Whatever. Okay. I'll go look at that. Yeah, it's a really cute. It's a really pretty quilt. No, I haven't looked. 
<laughs> I, I did my one, one bingo sheet when I was filling that out. And I thought I could do about five bingo sheets. Mm -hmm. So much down there. So I thought, no, no, I'm not, not signing <laughs> up for another one. Uh -huh. <laughs> it helps you focus, doesn't it? The it does. It, it, it does. <laughs> and I do. I, I pull out that bingo sheet and I look uh -huh. at it and I think, okay, today I'm going to try this. Of course, I don't look at it every day, but mm -hmm. you know, when, when I do look at it and I think, okay, so today I did one of the things on there. So yeah, exactly. It that's more beneficial for me than having a list. And I yes, put even yes. things on there like to clean my machines. Oh and you know, yes. I thought, you know, and I clean my machines pretty well, but I thought, you know, it's nice to have it on a list of things that I'm gonna, you know, check off. Even though I had it on a list, there's something about seeing everything on that sheet. Yes. Yes. And then <laughs> then you know like I, I can pick and choose which exactly. <laughs> which ones I feel like tackling at that that time. You know? uh -huh. so. yeah. And it's nice to have to know just to have it written down. I mean yeah, sometimes you write a list and you're like, yeah, I've got my list. I'm not gonna look at it. But if you have the bingo sheet, you're like, oh, maybe I'll do this one. Or sometimes I play a game with myself and I'm like, oh, I think I'll do the ones in the corners today. Or you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, my list for you for you guys that are new that Julie did, sent us a um, a bingo sheet that we could fill out with tasks that we want to do in our sewing room or anything right. else. And so every time you get done and you can um, mark it off and then enter the little contest she has. And stuff. It's, a yeah. whip, it's whip bingo. <laughs> so yeah, if you go, have you have you logged into the website yet, Deborah? Um, I just did yesterday and I saw the blank bingo sheet, but I wasn't sure what it was about yet. But if it's what I'm understanding, I probably could fill a couple of them out. <laughs> so what we do, um, I give away a prize once a month and I, we were doing challenges and things, but this, this last one, we started the bingo thing. I think we're going to keep it up for a while because everybody mm -hmm. has works in progress that they need to work on or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have to be a whole quilt. It can just be like putting the binding on a quilt or whatever. It's just whatever you want to get done that month. You can put it on your bingo sheet and then each month, I'm not going to tell you what game we're playing of bingo, but at the, on, um, so what you do is you fill the whole thing out and you take a picture of it and you post it on the website okay. so that we can see it. So we can, we can like hold you to it. <laughs> and then, um, and then next month when on the date, I think it's the 18th, right? You guys, the 18th, mm -hmm. um, well, I'll say, okay, you know, the game for this month was whatever, you know, four corners or whatever. And then um, whoever has that bingo or is closest to having that bingo that wins the prize. And then if more than one person has it, then we'll do like a random number thing. But very good. Yeah, yeah I'm glad you're going to continue it because that was really a motivator. Yeah, yeah I, thought I if think it's a really it, good I one blank sheet that I would continue it. It was just such a really good motivator. It really was. And focusing yeah, really to figure out which to put on the sheet was really helpful right. because you left right. off not everything, which made it more um right. well less daunting to actually get something done. Right. You could decision. even put on their iron fabric for cutting. You know, that was one <laughs> one little thing. Yeah. Yep. Having printer issues, I might just have to hand draw the bingo sheet. You can. <laughs> put it on a whiteboard and then you'll have it every month. Yeah, put it, that's an yeah, idea. You can put it on your whiteboard and write it and take a picture. Mm. Oh, yeah, I've got one that's in my son's room and he's that he hasn't lived here for a long time, so I could do that. Oh, that would be a great idea. Okay, you thank go. you. <laughs> you you know that Anne was an educator when she comes up with these fun things. <laughs> Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> um let's see what was I gonna say um I don't remember now oh well anyway I've got so many ideas you guys it's terrible <laughs> I've got way too many it's ideas wonderful. It's wonderful. So I'm gonna end up throwing there you're you're gonna get them all <laughs> I'm throwing them all at you <laughs> I don't know how you do it that's that's great I don't <laughs> you get a lot you get a lot done Julie you know you you uh, filter in some of your beautiful handwork and then these other designs and it's like okay I can't do them all but they are really beautiful oh thank you oh yes yeah, yeah you're quick I'm sorry 
I'm you're quick with the embroidery. You yes, she is. Yeah. I, I, you guys, I have been trying to learn to embroider since I was five. I'm not kidding. Since I was five years old, I've wanted to embroider, and um, every time I've tried it, it just comes out looking like garbage, and I hate it. And, and well, my, so about done. a year ago, I was like, "That's it. I'm going to learn this. If it kills me, I'm going to learn how to embroider." <laughs> and so I start. I just started practicing. And, and watching videos and I'm like, oh, that's why mine always comes, you know, I was pulling it too tight or whatever, you know, whatever it was that I was doing. And so now I'm like, oh, I can finally do it. So I just really, really am loving it. So yeah, your work is beautiful. So much of that for me. Beautiful. <laughs> I can't imagine anything you did is garbage. Oh, <laughs> I can't either. <laughs> no, seriously, you guys, my, my embroidery, it's like, I, I feel like my embroidery is like my handwriting and you guys have seen my handwriting. So you know how bad it is. <laughs> this is my embroidery. I always thought I was like, my embroidery is as bad as my handwriting. It must be a thing. <laughs> you know? I don't no, your embroidery is very pretty. It's very pretty. Well, it, it, it's definitely gotten better and I'm, and I'm actually quite proud of, of it now. But when I, yeah. but when I, before I was not proud of it. Yeah. yeah didn't like my embroidery at all. So. Deborah, are you working on any quilts right now? Um, <laughs> probably way too many. I just started a, a paper piecing double wedding mm -hmm. quilt. So I'm, oh, fine. Oh. This is I'm cutting out. Let's see if I can. So I've been working on that. No, 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 no. Uh, Go get a toy. Go get a toy. The mystery quilt along. Uh, so one block a month there. I have a fidget quilt that I have to I have like four projects that I actually have to quilt. Mm -hmm. And that's my weakness. So I've been putting those off. Yeah. So is a fidget quilt for like someone with dementia or for a child or? Yeah, actually, uh, my best friend's mom is starting to, to uh, show signs of that. And she sits in her chair and she kind of picks at herself. And I was reading a novel and they talked about, uh, you know, one of those quilting murder mystery novels. Right. And one of the premises, they started talking about a fidget quilt. So I looked it up and I'm like, oh, maybe I'll try to make one. So I kind of took some what I could Google and um, put it together. So now I have to quilt it and do that part of it. But I got the top done. Very good. Well, That's a really nice thing to do. Please post that when you get done so we could see what that looks like. Because I yeah. think we all have people like that in our lives that could use something like that. And I think that's yeah. a great idea. I kept yeah, it pretty that's... simple. Some of them go pretty extreme. And and um, I just found some charm packs and kind of added some zippers and um, buttons and little little doodads. So yeah. kept it more on the simple side. But that sounds really interesting. That wow. sounds really good. Mm -hmm. Hi, yeah. Karen. How are you? Did you hear me? Hi, Karen. Oh, hi. hi yeah. How are you? <laughs> so you two ladies who are new, um, Karen and Deborah, do you have any questions about um, the, the club or, you know, like what is going on or is there anything that you needed to ask about that? Um, probably not yet for me. I just really got on yesterday. So I've just started looking around and then I saw this. So I thought I'd um, join and see what this was about. And um, I'm still, I guess, navigating. Okay. Good. Sometimes you don't know, like if you have a question until later on, but I'm always available by email. So if you, any of the emails that you get from me, if you just hit reply on that, it comes straight to me. So you can okay. just go ahead and an email if you have any questions. Did you have any questions, Karen? Um, just one. I uh -huh. actually got two of the Tilda Clubs because I, I'm giving one to a friend of mine as uh -huh. a birthday gift. And uh -huh. So how can I connect her into all of this? Um, okay, so because you signed up through Chelsea at Pink Door, you'll need to contact uh, her, actually probably her assistant and um, and let her know, and then she can um, basically, I would just send her an email and say, hey, I did this for my friend. Here's her email address and her um, her address and her phone number, and then they can get that all um, changed over for you. And then they'll send me a, a message about getting her into um, the email list and everything. Okay, great. 
great. That's a nice thing to do for a friend. That's really yeah, that's really that's happy. Very nice. That's very nice. Yeah. <laughs> He's a really, 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 really good friend. <laughs> but that's lovely. Yeah. And we live, she's moved far away. So I'm in Illinois and she moved to Oregon. So oh, okay. you know, I'm like, but when something new comes out, Tilda, you know, there's so much of a time difference, but she'll be on her phone like going, hey, guess what? This new collection's coming out. I'll be like, damn you. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Where in Illinois do you live? I live in the suburbs of Chicago. I'm oh, okay. Chicago. I live in St. Louis. I was just wondering if you were oh, yeah. on the southern part. St. Louis, so. <laughs> What'd you say? I was born in East St. Louis, so. Oh, okay, okay. I lived in that area for about 10 years, so. Oh, okay. Well, Karen, what you and your friend might really enjoy is on the last Saturday of the month, Julie yes. does an open sew over Zoom. And I love doing that. Just the I community of women. It's usually just a handful of us. Mm -hmm. And I just like, you know, especially during the pandemic, just getting yes. out. And, and I don't have, and then I don't have to lug my sewing machine everywhere mm -hmm. to sew, do an open <laughs> sew with everybody. It's, everything's here. I can leave, go get lunch when I want to. Um, <laughs> but it's also nice because all these little questions that I have that I don't want to ask right. when we do something like this, it's like I can go, you know, Julie... <laughs> <laughs> How do I do this? And so um, I feel like I get a little more information sometimes on what's going on in the club because I feel like I feel more comfortable asking those questions. Right. I agree. Sometimes. And I like that open flow too for that reason. Yeah. But yeah, with you and your friend being able to get in there together, you could spend that time together and chat. Yeah. It's great. We, we've said that we need to like, you know, have Zoom days to where we just sew all day long together. Or so. Yes. Her she shed is being built right now, so. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, her whole big she shed in the back of her house, so. <laughs> I'm jealous. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> what part of Oregon is she in? She's in Bend, in, like, outside of Bend. She's actually oh. in Red. Oh, okay. Is, okay. I have two cousins that live up in Bend. Okay, so yeah, she's just the next town over in Red Bend. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's... It's nice out there, but <laughs> I miss her. Yeah. But she got a she shed out of it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to be a nice one. And it's got, I bet that was part of the deal. <laughs> yeah. It's got a view of the Sisters Mountains. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's really nice. That's part of the deal. That's a good deal. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So for open, so you actually bring your sewing machines into the zoom meeting i haven't been to one of those yet okay. oh yeah well we just do it from our whatever our sewing room is <laughs> okay I do it right here because all my sewing stuff's right here <laughs> and you're working yeah. on you can things. do you can do whatever you want normally i'm sewing or i'm cutting or doing a binding yeah. but this last time i was desperately going through some paperwork trying to find something so <laughs> i just i wasn't doing anything with sewing and at the end she's like I'm so glad I had this time to go through my <laughs> go through my paperwork. Yeah, <laughs> it just kind of yeah. allowed me that time to focus and chat to somebody right. while I'm doing it. So it was really yeah. great. Dedicated time that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So we just sew and talk and whatever. Just yeah, yeah. gab. Yeah. They started I joined in and I wasn't even doing anything. I just joined in. Yeah. 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 Nice. Yeah, the it's last so nice to just be able I... to connect with people. I think that's why I yeah. actually enjoy why well, I first joined and started doing quilting is the whole yeah. social aspect of it. And yeah. losing that's... some of that during the pandemic has been really yes. hard. And this hard. Tilda Club thing came up and it's just been so perfect to be able mm -hmm. to connect with people and not feel so isolated and stuff. Right. I agree. And I really do like, um, I'm to the point now that I don't want to take too many classes in person. I like doing it online because I don't want to lug these machines around and everything around. I just don't want to do that. Yeah. So, yeah. I always forget something. Usually, it's usually the power cord to my machine. <laughs> <laughs> then I end up there. I'm like, well, I guess I could hand sew. <laughs> so, Susan, I see you're doing some hand sewing there. What are you working on? Oh, the EPP, the Lotus, still. Oh, for the oh wow. Still. Yeah. Can you hold it up higher? Oh, oh, that's pretty. I? I don't oh, that's beautiful. Oh, pretty. pretty. Very nice. Yeah, this is number um, 14. So
So oh, we'll awesome. get one more to go after that. <laughs> <laughs> that block, I thought that Yay. block was hard. Oh, um, I think the next one is looks harder. Oh, the stars. I'm going to try to do that by yeah. machine. I think you can do it. You could definitely do the stars by machine. I'm going right. to try that one by machine. Well, my hands have had yeah, it. I think I've made a commitment to do it all by hand. The whole thing by hand. Yeah. Yeah. I've even been, it's even making me go crazy enough to think maybe I'll even try quilting it by hand. <laughs> <laughs> I've, you've really. My hands won't do it anymore. <laughs> weird space. <laughs> I, I go to bed and my hands will keep me up at night with discomfort. Oh, I'm so, so sorry. Yeah. yeah. So that's, well, that's okay. I'll just take Tylenol and I'll machine do it. You yeah. know, there's yeah. always another way. Um, I, just, I, I was just seeing on a, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just seeing on a video I was watching today about these finger thimbles that stick on there. Have you guys used those oh, at all? They work pretty well. <laughs> yeah. That's what Sally uses all the time. Yeah. I use those. And then I just bought another thimble that had um, indentations all the way around. I've been using the gumdrop thimbles that I like, but I want some that had more indentations all the way around for the needle to hit. I started using a leather one that's got elastic on the back side of it. Uh -huh. And it's a leather thimble that, that goes from here to here. And so it doesn't bother my fingernails and it, okay. and it stays really tight. And because it's leather, I can still pull my needle with it. My, the hardest thing for me usually with a, um, with a thimble when I'm doing handwork is that I feel like my needle slips and then I have to move my needle to get it back to where I want it to be to sew with. But with the leather one, I don't have that problem. And so, so it doesn't it work. I usually, oh, okay. yeah, like I got that in St. Louis, Anne, if you want me to tell you where to find them, where, it, it's where'd you get it? Yep, sign of the arrow. Sign of the arrow. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I know exactly bunch. where that is. Okay. That's the one that, that I good. I stock up on them because I really love them. Yeah. Does the needle puncture through there? Uh, no. Sometimes I'll hit the seam wrong and it might want to go through the seam, but it doesn't really go through. Oh, good. And yeah, you I'll just kind of the arrows a needle point store. So that's really, yeah, yeah, that's good. I'll look there. I've lived in East St. Louis uh, recently or East of Metro East in Illinois. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to be in St. Louis. The 19th, the week of the 19th. Ah, well, there you so, go. I worked at Edwardsville. My friend lives in O'Fallon. So, oh, okay. And, yep. and we go to Jackman's and Quilted Fox oh, yeah. and, and Oh So Personal. And I know all those, yeah. <laughs> and we're going to go to Missouri too. Star also. Yeah. God knows I do not need another piece of fabric. No. <laughs> you got to do I it. Want I walked out of Jackman's yesterday with no fabric. <laughs> oh, oh, that's well, so listen, I treated myself to Julie's shop. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I did not need to buy fabric. No, I was very no. good to myself last month. But you know, Quilted Fox moved. Yes, I okay. signed up for their email and I saw, or okay, good. newsletter and I saw that they moved. But yeah, no, I can't buy any fabric. My, my poor credit card is smoking. <laughs> I was in, well, I was in, in, in London at Liberty. Oh, I did so, that too. Yeah. yeah. So, and so that's, you know, <laughs> I, mm -hmm. so I have to have some self-control. <laughs> well, Julie just had that tempting sale going on in your shop. Yes. I think it. people were too tempted because I had a whole bunch of people um, quit my newsletter yesterday after I sent this, sent it out. <laughs> a whole bunch of people unsubscribed. I'm like, I'm sorry for tempting you so much that you had to leave. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she's having a real good sale. You're still having a good sale right now. It's like 20%. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 20% off everything except for the Liberty and then the Liberty. Um, other stuff is 40% off. So the um, older seasonal stuff. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll stay off your website. That's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. that, that, that's, what, that's what I did. I saw the email and just, no, can't do it. Can't do it. When oh, no. I came back. I saw, the, I saw the email and did. So. Oh, <laughs> well, you guys, I don't do it to tempt you. I don't. I, and, and not because I'm trying to like sell you stuff all the time. The reason I do it is I would feel guilty 
if I sent it out to my regular newsletter people before I gave it to you guys, because you guys are more important. <laughs> so I oh, have I to send it to that. you guys first. Doesn't bother me. <laughs> I have to send it to you guys first and you can ignore it or say, I don't need more fabric. That's fine. But if I didn't send it to you first and I send it to my other customers first, then that would be bad for you guys. <laughs> Makes it special. Yep. So you guys always get first dibs on everything. Appreciate um, it. So I'm getting a, some sort of a must be. Amber. Are you getting an alert? Must be. Yeah, it sounds like a storm warning. Yeah, there goes mine. Conserve energy. Oh, are they getting ready? I to just got energy? that too. Did you get one? It's draining the energy grid. Mm. Yeah, I was. Some of you guys that logged on after I talked to Julie, but we had uh, one of our power poles burst into flames here about two o'clock. Oh. Um, I think it's because a condenser overheated. So. Um, I probably need to go in a minute and turn down my AC or turn up the heat on the temperature on my um, AC so I don't draw too much power. Yeah. yeah. And I probably should. Um, well, we've been on almost an hour, so we probably yeah. should, should should go. So you guys don't don't resent me for keeping you too long. <laughs> but I love that. your faces. I don't want you to go. <laughs> anyway, I'm so glad that you guys could come. And thanks, Deborah and Karen, for coming to your first Good, Thank you. Good to meet you. And yeah, I hope you fun. come back soon. Um, so we'll be doing, I'm doing um, afternoon every other week, and I'm doing earlier in the day every other week. That way, I'm trying to catch people who are not able to come at night Good. and come in the morning. So hopefully, we'll we'll get a round of people going and, um, and you guys will see me for a tutorial again in two weeks. We'll do those every other week. So good. Very and good. Will the morning be the same as the evening or you could go to both or how does that kind of work? Yeah. So morning will be, um, so we're doing evening this week. We'll do morning next week. And I'm, I'm only doing tutorials in the afternoon. So those are going to only be on these calls, but we'll, um, I'll send out the video. Like if you can't make the call, I'll send out the video for the tutorial um, in a couple of days as soon as I get it uploaded. So, so next week would just be a chat, like what we're doing next right week, now. Yeah, next week will just be just be a chat. So if you have questions about what we've been working on or, or something, right. okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right, if you do it next week, I'll join you from retreat. Yay! <laughs> If I don't well, disturb my if other, you guys retreaters. didn't see it. I put up the last tutorial for um, the vintage star. Yeah, I saw. <laughs> I that. was in. Yeah. I was in sweatpants with my hair up. <laughs> I looked really great in that video. <laughs> yeah, but whatever. Anyway, <laughs> okay. okay. I was like, uh, I'll never get this done. It was on the day that our power went out too. So, <laughs> okay. but I'm just well, doing. I'll never that. get it done. So I just did it oh. anyway. Okay. So, um, I will see you guys again next week or the week after or whatever. And okay. if you need anything, just email me. Okay. Okay. Be safe, you guys. And Hello, keep cool. Bye. 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 Bye.